Once upon a time, in a lovely island part of Montreal, there was a very fancy golf place. This place had super bright green grass that stayed green all year. Even when it was cold and snowy, a company that knows a lot about science made a special food for the grass that could make snow go away. Imagine our friend Dan, who works keeping the place safe. Dan loves to get ready for any danger and listens to mysterious stories on his radio. Dan's daughter, Patricia, helps carry golf clubs for players at this fancy golf place. The big boss of the science company, Michel, was showing off the amazing grass to some rich visitors. But there was a big problem. The special grass food was making the drinking water in town go bad. Meanwhile, a movie actor named Jacques drank some tap water, used it to clean his fruits and things, and then felt very weird. At his house, he saw his teeth turn green and felt very hungry in a strange way. Suddenly, he turned into a zombie and even made his wife turn into one. Back at the golf place, things went wild. Someone ran out shouting about people getting sick, and then zombie workers started chasing him. A dog got really mad and bit his owner. Michelle and the man ran inside a building, locking out the zombies, but the dog got in, bit the man, and then they had to lock the dog away. Zombies kept trying to get in, and soon the man turned into a zombie, too. Michelle was hiding in the kitchen, holding onto a knife. In town, Dan heard loud noises from his neighbors and found out they had turned into zombies. An old lady neighbor turned into a zombie, too, and Dan had to hide in his car, trying to call for help, but no one answered. Patricia, his daughter, was trying to stay away from zombies, too. Dan was really worried, so he got his own car, which had a weapon in it, ready to fight the zombies. Nearby, a boy named Andre almost used the bad tap water for his little sister Annie's milk. Their mom, feeling weird, turned into a zombie after thinking it was just because she worked out too much. She started chasing Andre, but he managed to get away. Dan accidentally hit the zombie mom with his car. Andre wanted to help, but Dan said it was too dangerous. They tried calling for help, but no one answered. Andre didn't want to leave his mom, so he pulled her inside locked all the doors, and found out from 911 that the island was cut off from the outside world because of the zombies. Police were blocking the bridge to the mainland. The zombie mom tried to get to Annie, but Andre was doing everything he could to keep them safe. As his mom turns into a zombie, so he quickly moves her into the bathroom to keep her safe from doing any harm. The bathroom shower starts dripping, and this catches zombie mom's attention so she decides to hop into the tub. Meanwhile, Andre's little sister, Annie, starts crying, which could attract more zombies. Andre quickly thinks on his feet and covers her with pillows and blankets to keep her quiet. Suddenly, their cat comes back, and a zombie tries to grab it. Andre, brave as ever, picks up a golf club to protect them, and the zombie decides to hide instead. Over at the golf club, Patricia, who is Andre's friend, finds a safe spot in the garage and calls her dad Dan for help. Dan is like a superhero. He arrives at the golf club, fights off zombies, and rushes to save his daughter. But then, something huge happens. The police leave the bridge as the military decides to bomb the island, trying to stop the zombie outbreak. This turns off all the power, and things start to look pretty bleak. Annie's nanny finds out she can't leave the island because the bridge is gone. Andre tries to keep his spirits up by recording videos of the zombies and watches a news conference on his phone, but then his phone dies. When he checks on his mom, she's covered in green goo. Scary, right? But Andre is brave and manages to stop his mom when she tries to attack again. Feeling trapped, Andre decides it's time to leave. He gets Annie ready, distracts the zombies with the cat, and makes a run for it to find supplies. Just when they're about to get caught, Dan saves them by pulling them into a store where he's been hiding out. Inside the store, they find Patricia, who has also turned into a zombie. Dan is keeping her safe, hoping they can find a cure. Meanwhile, Michel, the guy from the biotech company, is dealing with his own problems, including a zombie dog and some really tough decisions. Dan, Andre, and Patricia, with her head safely in a cage, decide to find out what's causing the zombie outbreak. They think it might be something in the water. They leave the store, dodge zombies who are strangely enjoying the sunlight, and make it to Dan's car to escape. At the water plant, 
They hope to find answers. They can't leave Patricia with Annie because it's too dangerous, so they all go inside. Inside, they find a zombie hiding in the water, but Patricia, even as a zombie, helps lead them to it. A scene where Patricia causes quite a stir. She falls into a pool, and Dan has to jump in to save her. Suddenly, another zombie shows up, but backs off when it sees Dan using Patricia to protect himself. Andre figures out something really interesting. Zombies don't want to hurt each other. But that doesn't stop one from chasing him. Outside, the situation heats up as more zombies start chasing Andre. During the chaos, Dan accidentally pulls off Patricia's arm while trying to rescue her from the water. They all rush to the car where Andre finds Patricia's phone. He uses her arm, yes, you read that right, to unlock the phone and see something weird, grass growing out of the wound. Dan is puzzled by the sight of grass in winter, but then it hits him. The weird events aren't caused by bad guys from far away, but by something much closer to home, the golf club. At the golf club, some tough-looking twins are trying to get rid of evidence by breaking spheres on the grass. Dan and his crew arrive and notice something strange about the smoke on the grass. They can't get in through the front, so Dan finds a creative way to enter by climbing up to the roof. Once inside, they have to figure out what to do with Patricia, so they lock her in a storage room. Andre makes a safe spot for Annie using chairs. Dan and Andre then go on a mission inside the building discovering a dog that's also covered in grass and somehow still breathing. Dan starts feeling dizzy, and the situation gets more tense when Annie starts crying. Andre tries to calm her down, but realizes she's escaped her makeshift playpen. While Andre looks for Annie, Dan explores a dark hallway and stumbles upon bombs ready to explode. Despite feeling really bad, Dan is determined not to give up. He finds the room with the timer for the explosives, and in a heroic moment, he stops the timer using Patricia's arm, just as his ease begin to turn green. Outside, the twins notice that their plan hasn't worked, because nothing has exploded. They find Annie in the kitchen, and try to feed her something very bad. Meanwhile, Andre encounters Michelle, who has turned into a zombie, locked up in a room. He runs away, and finally finds his sister. Just when things couldn't get more intense, the twins confront Andre and Annie. They try to make Andre and Annie eat the bad stuff. But in a twist, Annie turns into a zombie and bites one of the twins. The other twin fights Dan, but Andre manages to turn the tables and Dan bites her. Suddenly, Andre accidentally activates something that releases a smoke which seems to start healing Dan and Annie. Here, Dan, who's been turned into a zombie, finds Andre in the kitchen. Just as he's about to attack, something amazing happens. Dan senses his daughter, Annie, nearby and stops himself. It's as if love is stronger than the zombie madness. At the same time, the twins, who were causing so much trouble, end up shooting each other before they can fully turn into zombies. Andre then comes up with a clever idea. He grabs Dan's old phone from his jacket and uses it to call Patricia's phone. This way, he finds the phone and records a video explaining everything they have been through, hoping to get some help. The video somehow makes its way to the news, spreading the word about their crazy adventure. As the story continues, the government decides it's time to take action. They send helicopters and soldiers with flamethrowers to clean up the mess, burning any zombies they find. Andre, trying to be helpful, brings Patricia's arm, thinking it might be used to make a vaccine. But when another survivor tries to approach the soldiers, they shoot him down. This makes Andre realize that these soldiers aren't here to rescue them, but to make sure no one gets off the island who might be infected. Back at the golf club, Dan starts to get better, thanks to the makeshift cure. But as soon as the soldiers find them, they don't hesitate to burn both Dan and Patricia, showing no mercy. The Minister of Public Security then tells everyone that the situation is under control, but he's seen with a mug that has the biotech company's logo on it. This little detail hints that he might have been in on the whole mess from the start. As Andre keeps exploring, he finds more evidence of how the survivors have been treated by those supposed to rescue them with bodies of survivors who've been shot down. 
But just when things seem hopeless, he spots a boat on the river. It's manned by volunteers, including Anya's nanny. They don't think twice about rescuing him. As they sail away from the island, Andre looks at Patricia's arm, realizing it's no longer of any use, and tosses it into the water. But then, a fish takes a bite of it and turns into a zombie fish, showing that the danger might not be over after all. And that's where our story wraps up, leaving us with a mix of hope and a reminder that some problems can be trickier to solve than we think, all told through an adventure that's as wild as any movie.